The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Project Nerd as a whole. I could let them know about, about the sorrow and the happiness that the future has in store for them. Maybe they could learn from it. Let's dive deep. Let's dive right in. We're going to dive deep into this. Let's deep dive into this. This is Diving Deep. This is Diving Deep. This is Diving Deep. Welcome to Project Nerds Diving Deep Podcast, the podcast where we dive deep into serious topics. I'm Iggy, your host for this week's episode, all about conspiracy theories. You know, the thing shady websites or the president of the United States likes to share. 2020 seems to be a year full of conspiracy theories, more than normal. Even though we have a good understanding as to why these things exist, at least at some level, and to why they're happening more this year, it's hard to figure out why so many people are jumping on board. And a lot of people are jumping on board. Because of this, we felt a diving deep was needed on this divisive and troubling topic. Today, we'll discuss some of the largest theories bouncing around the internet and the water cooler, which if there still is a water cooler conversation in 2020, we're also going to explore why there's huge problems with the facts that the quote unquote leader of the free world is spreading conspiracy theories and using them to his advantage. And we're going to break down how all of his distractions and how the distractions of conspiracy theories impact what's ahead. But as we get started, let's make something clear early. When we say conspiracy theories in this episode, we're not talking about partisan differences of opinions, news stories on the brink of breaking, or a slight amount of misinformation later being corrected. No, we're talking conspiracies that are so radical and so untrue that it's hard to believe they even exist, let alone that they're growing, especially at the rate they are this year. We may not cover everything, like we won't cover something like the belief that social media entities are suppressing the Save Our Children hashtag because they're liberal businesses trying to protect people. No, because as crazy and far-fetched as that is, we're looking at something bigger and greater, the things that drive that. Conspiracy theories like the ones behind the pandemic video, the belief that Wayfair and Tom Hanks are behind a child sex traffic ring, the many global catastrophes apparently started by Democrats to tank the economy and oust Trump, QAnon, Obamagate, mail-in voting fraud numbers, and other ridiculous claims. Yeah, the unbelievable, absurd shit that is, well being seen as believable and plausible by adults of all ages, backgrounds, and education. Things that are picking up steam at an astron- astronomical rate this year and just don't seem to make sense. While the Flat Earther movement has been growing all around the world for some time now, and climate change deniers have long subscribed to Big Oil's agenda, and people have long tied autism to vaccines... Oh, wait, wait. Hold up. I still can't believe that's a thing. But anyways, but anyways, while those have been some of the how longer standing conspiracy theories around, sadly, those absurd beliefs have been joined by so many new extraordinary claims over the past four years, especially this year, 2020. Much of that's because conspiracy theories often pick up believers with the explanation that something extraordinary that occurred or is occurring must have extraordinary origins. And all that extraordinary in 2020 happening at once makes it even more extra, extraordinary. What I'm saying is this is a crazy year and we're looking for crazy reasons to believe why it's crazy. I mean, just break down some of what this single year has thrown at us. We started the year with nearly all of Australia burning down. Yeah, that was 2020. Then egos and misinformation nearly brought us to the brink of another global war. A pandemic that we still don't fully understand has a virus that's killed over 200,000 Americans and is still ongoing. The wildfires that continue this year here in the United States, burning right in our own backyard, setting records in California and Colorado. Hurricanes are resurrecting themselves after disappearing And it's so odd that the National Weather Service is calling them zombie storm systems. And of course, social injustice, institutional racism, something this podcast covered just a few months ago, has come to the forefront of cities from coast to coast, with video footage catching more and more of those injustices every night. Yeah, we've seen enough negativity and craziness in just this one unfinished year to fill three lifetimes. And it's all happening while we, 
while many of us anyways remain mostly quarantined inside our homes, giving us plenty of extra time in front of our screens to see social media posts, articles, news, and opinions from a countless number of sources, spreading agendas, some true, some false. Underneath all this craziness, though, is a political and social war that is playing out like never before. There is a lot this year that is left unexplained, much we're still trying to figure out how to combat or deal with. There are often big questions in our world that just don't have solid answers yet. But the list has expanded exponentially this year. In an interview with NPR on conspiracy theories, Albert, Albert Muller, president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, said, quote, We as human beings do not like unanswered moral questions. We want to know who did it. We want to know how it was done. We're looking for a pattern. Our intelligence, given to us by God, is a pattern-seeking intelligence, end quote. By linking, loose, by linking loosely connected dots, or dots that have no connections but were implied to be connected by a possible trusted source, we can give meaning to this madness around us. But it's not just about trying to make sense of it all, it's also about making it more exciting and inclusive. So as much as we as people, the consumer, are trying to find connections to these dots, there's other people that are causing conspiracy theories to grow basic operations of our federal government are really boring. They just really are. A pandemic causing virus running rampant, no matter if governments got ahead of it or pretended it didn't exist, isn't a fun story to write about. None of the basic underlying reasons for some of those big 2020 catastrophes have a hook to excite the masses, meaning the profit-driven media sources, both legitimate and not legitimate, sometimes need that extra flair to convince you to click that link. Basically, conspiracy theories also pick up steam because they, one, help us make sense of this mad, 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 mad world. Two, they add that flair, as I mentioned, and excitement to things that sometimes just naturally and unexcitedly happen. And three, which in turn causes the ungodly number of quote unquoted news sources to dress up for ratings and profits. Four, the big one that's also being impacted this year is a president who is fanning those flames. All these things in order to distract you from real truths. Well, the first two reasons have long been around, and the third one has been building for some time as sources have grown. It's the fourth and final of these four causes we highlighted that is really changing the game and concerns me. We'll get to that shortly. But what conspiracy theories are at the heart of a calendar year that feels fresh out of a George R. R. Martin novel? I mentioned there's many. Well, let's start with the coronavirus one. Unless you've lived under a rock, you're very aware of a sweeping pandemic that is responsible for the death of over 1 million people worldwide and 200,000 Americans. It's incredibly disruptive and a destructive pandemic that is leading people to wonder why and how a virus has spread so far and so quickly in this day and age. Being that the disease originated in China, the conspiracies have definitely started there. I mean, if you were to pick one of the world's governments to poison its own citizens with a lab-made disease, you'd probably put China at the top, at least top three. Add in a huge fact many are forgetting, leading up to this virus, China's government was experiencing pushback like never before, with protests in major Chinese cities lasting for months. Wow. All of that is material primed for concocting conspiracy theories galore about a virus that was started in a lab or constructed. Add in the fact that our president dismissed it as a threat, allowing it to get out of control in this country, and then begin, begin immediately pushing blame on China, including flaming fictional conspiracies around China, and you have the near-perfect ingredients for a conspiracy that nearly one in three Americans believe. That doesn't even begin to touch on the conspiracies around the CDC and World Health Organization, supposedly being at fault for letting this out of control, also flamed by a president who is constantly lying to get this off of, the blame off of his plate. As stated earlier, people tend to believe extraordinary claims, sometimes no matter how outrageous or proven wrong, especially when the circumstances themselves are extraordinary. And the pandemic we have faced this year is anything but ordinary. But the theories this year aren't just flying across the internet because of the pandemic. There are countless other conspiracy theories running rampant, many that even showed up before the coronavirus far too many to cover, but some of the other notable ones obviously are the science-denying conspiracies. 
There's the claim that climate change is not impacted by humans, even though nearly every scientist says it is, and the data supports that without a doubt we have had a hand in it, making this one mind-numbingly irritating to address. Then the Flat Earther movement that we briefly mentioned before has really picked up steam over the past five years, something I can't even wrap my head around. This conspiracy lives and dies on their experiments continuously not being ready, and they make such claims that Australia doesn't even actually exist and that all the world's governments and space agencies are keeping the truth from us because, wait, because, okay, okay wait, they still haven't fully figured out why the governments are keeping the truth from us, but they, they believe they are. With those two come the many other science-denying conspiracies that actually have an easy-to-understand origin, mostly religion. As I've mentioned in previous podcasts, I believe in God myself, but that belief doesn't conflict with the fact that science is science, and it's real. Oh so real. For the most part, one might say those science-denying ones seem harmless, or at least less harmful than the other ones we have mentioned in our go-dimension. But that's a big bag of false. These ones are the ones that are allowing big businesses to convince individuals, and more importantly, politicians, that they need to continue to operate with little to no regulations for immediate profit without doing anything to save our world in the new future. I would continue down a road of just listing absurd theories that go beyond the ones dealing directly with the climate, the planet, and the evolution of our species on it, but we only have so much time, so I'll feel... I should quickly touch on a few that are important outside of that realm because there's other ones that are being acknowledged or pushed further into people's peripherals by a president that again should just stop fucking lying. The craziest of these political driven conspiracies linked specifically to the right wing mindset is QAnon. If you're not familiar with this one, well, you're in for a treat and by treat I mean a headache. The core of QAnon is the false theory that Trump was elected to root out a secret child sex trafficking ring run by satanic, cannibalistic Democrat politicians and celebrities, something only further supported by Trump's baseless claims against others to further separate himself from a real child sex trafficking ring ran by Jeffrey Epstein, which don't worry, I'll touch that on, on that in a bit, but QAnon grew into a multi-headed monster. QAnon was the base for an immediately debunked, but somehow still supported by nutcases theory referred to as Pizzagate. The idea that a pizza place in Washington, D.C. actually was trafficking children out of their basements. When a conspiracy theory loving domestic terrorist, we do refer to angry white people trying to shoot places up by the proper term here, tried to liberate children by running into a pizza place armed, the situation was thrusted into mainstream media mainly because it was immediately evident that the pizza place didn't even have a basement. But other QAnon-linked conspiracies have held on longer. There are numerous ties between QAnon and the aforementioned coronavirus conspiracies, which truly makes sense considering what those are all about. And of course, the deep state theory from within QAnon that includes both the highly ranked intelligence officers that goes by Q, Clearance Patriot, decoding secret government messages for the Q cult, and the deeper side see what I did there? All of the theory that Deep State is a shadowy network of politicians and bureaucrats secretly collaborating to control the government behind the scenes. As stated by author Joe Forrest, quote, the people most likely to believe that the government is too incompetent to be trusted are often the people most likely to believe the government also has the ability to secretly orchestrate massive operations under the noses of most Americans. That quote, in a nutshell, explains QAnon. Which, oh the by the way, QAnon is something often tweeted or shared by Trump himself when he fills back into a corner. I doubt that's very surprising to anyone, but when I make the claims that the president is spreading these, that's not false rhetoric, that's fact, coming straight from his mouth. But that's not the only outrageous theories Trump subscribes to, or at the very least sells to his followers to distract from his follies and wrongdoings. In fact, the Center for American Progress Action Fund did the research and so that Trump had shown support for at least 20 conspiracy theories that had zero evidence of actually being true. Why does he do this? Well, let's look at the beginning. During the 2016 presidential election, Donald Trump made a countless number of claims that were fact-checked by experts and found to be baseless. But the more he made those outrageous claims, the more the people wanting the swamps of Washington, D.C. to be drained became believers that those baseless statements were indeed real eventually leading us to the Trump we have right now. 
The claims he mostly made in his first campaign were claims against his opponent, Hillary Clinton. Due to a lack of research and interest in holding him accountable, Trump supporters forced a false narrative into becoming a reality. Now, Clinton is far from perfect, and in 2016 election, she definitely served as a lesser of two evil choices rather than a viable option to move this country into a better future. And although Trump could have taken that approach of arguing her actual shortcomings, he instead focused on rumors and theories of emails, and more importantly, a claim that the Clintons were tied to a billionaire sex trafficking scandal. Before I go too much further, there's so much to unpack with this scandal. The F Jeffrey Epstein scandal is real, a rumor mill of whispers and leaks that evolved into a plethora of facts due to evidence and truths that slowly leaked out. It was somewhat different than the wild conspiracy theories we already touched on, as this one has stacks of genuine facts and details to support it, and the only reason it hovers in the realm of conspiracy and not people being arrested as facts is because it's due to the billionaires protecting the interest pumping money into the legal battle and the media battle. But at the time, 2016, it wasn't Hillary or even Bill Clinton that were publicly connected to the billionaire pervert Epstein. No, it was Trump himself who was accused that very summer by a woman using the name Katie Johnson for raping her at a party at Epstein's Manhattan mansion in 1994 when she was just 13 years old. Now, I'm not saying Bill Clinton... Bill Clinton isn't also tied to this specific scandal in some way. I really don't know. And it's possible, but there isn't the level of evidence showing that the Clintons are tied to it as much as there are showing Trump tied to Epstein. In fact, the Epstein scandal, although very much a real and troubling legal issue as far back as 2005, was not the headline it eventually became, at least not in 2016. And it was federal prosecutor Alexander Acosta the same Acosta appointed by Trump in his first year as president to serve as the U.S. Secretary of Labor, who made a plea deal with Epstein and allowed the billionaire to continue to do what he was doing after a mostly private slap on the wrist. While Trump was so cleverly weaving a tale of ties between his opponent and a disgraced pedophile that, again, he, had the one tied, he was the one tied to and was being accused of raping people tied to Epstein, we have a man who is so often considered dumb a bumbling idiot by his opponents, who had just distanced himself from a billionaire child rapist quickly, muting horrendous accusations against him. But he also was able to sell the conservative vote that it was instead his opponent who was involved in the scandal and cover-up. Trump had mastered the spin and sell of a conspiracy theory before he even became president of the United States. Ignorance from the voting base had plenty to do with it, but nonetheless, his actions were impressive. Yet it became just the first taste for Trump, at least at the level of a politician. He soon saw how easy his baseless claims could carry into the world now that he was a politician and not just a failed business owner and reality TV star. He and the fearful conservative voters now had a common enemy in the liberals, and the eventual president realized that for the next four years, he could fuel whatever theories or lies he wanted against them, and that it would in turn, without question, become truth to the Republican base. Trump has spent four years living on distracting his followers, and because of the concept of epistemic bubbles and echo chambers, those distractions have so often worked. So how do we fix all this? Let's make this clear. Trump's greatest achievement as president is convincing the world of his fake news rhetoric, meaning that people who support Trump and people who oppose him have both bought in to the idea that we can dismiss a news story that doesn't support our stance as fake news, no matter how credible the source. Trump never has cried fake news over the past four years at actual fake news. No, he only states fake news when it's news that counters his goals or calls him out on his ridiculous actions and behaviors. We all do this now, or at least most of us. That becomes extremely important in this conspiracy theory conversation because it has allowed two major things to happen over the past four years that we hadn't seen before. The first for news sources to go unchecked. They're either accepted as fact or denied as faked without any legwork into actually ensuring those claims. And has also allowed numerous quote-unquote sources to rise out of nowhere to make wild claims without people questioning the validity of the statements and sources within. People at Trump rallies have constantly confirmed on camera and with their own words 
that they trust him because he's the president. They trust the sources they found only on social media and that they didn't need to do any research because it was already done for them by those sources. No, this is not a Trump supporter only issue. This again is a wide issue. I mentioned Trump's achievements just moments ago and I said he's convinced the world, not just his followers, that this is a tactic to use to defend in an argument one stands behind. So to start the list of what we can do, each and every one of us must first fact check and push back. Even the most legitimate of news sources gets it wrong sometimes. So this becomes our responsibility as the mass media consumer to do the needed legwork right now. We must first dismiss what we see on social media and other open communication platforms until we have found multiple legitimate sources to support it. We must stop ending our research at one source and instead find multiple credible claims that back up a timeline altering story. And we must push back on our family and friends that continue to make wild and intrusive claims without support. Second, we have to step outside our bubbles. We have to quit automatically dismissing things that we don't care for because they just don't fit our view or agenda. Our news and social media feeds are filled with like-minded individuals and sources catered to our established beliefs and lifestyles. When a very conservative registered Republican in Texas logs onto a computer, the information placed in front of them with ease vastly differs from what an independent progressive in Colorado will see. And although Google may tailor search results to fit each of those registered users, clicking on multiple links and sources will eventually lead both individuals to a same single truth. The echo chamber effect has gone too far. News sources, sources of different interest, and people with different backgrounds must be considered when exploring your truths. We have to step away from that comfort zone, away from the known agreeable answers. We have to get away from easy. We have to push ourselves to learn, and we must accept the fact that we're not always right. Third, we have to put the needs of others as high, at least, or above the needs of ourselves. This one might seem like a bit out of context, but when we're focusing on the greater good of all, we are most uh, more often able to accept that a truth presented to us may not be exactly what we want. Finally, we have to change the way politicians run this country. Not just Trump, not just Republicans, but all politicians. This one will be most difficult and exhausting, but it's an action that must be done in order for this country and this world to change course. And even though the battle will be long and difficult, it can start this November by voting out the most selfish, destructive, and corrupt administration this country has ever seen. For this election, we can't stand firm that neither option is the answer, at least not in 2020. I'll share with you some things that aren't conspiracy theories, but rather just an incredibly small dose of facts that's going to show to you why Biden might be a greater answer than Trump. Donald Trump paid zero dollars in income tax across 10 different years in a 15-year span before becoming president. Trump has to provide his DNA in a defamation case that claims he raped a woman, having to provide the DNA because there's enough evidence to suggest that it is likely true. Trump paid off a porn star to not disclose information of their affairs and is now legally required to cover her recent legal fees in their case because he couldn't prove her wrong. Trump has said he will change the laws to keep himself in power. At his own rallies, not reported by fake news, he has claimed that he will change those laws to allow him go a third, possibly a fourth, and even more terms. He's now swinging the Supreme Court from somewhat balanced to radically conservative, a move that Republican senators are already making changes to ensure stands for a long time. And Trump continuously dodges the question or even says he refuses to concede if the election is fairly won by his opponent, planning to take an election he is already preparing for a loss of to the courts and legal system. These are truths and are often truths brushed under a rug. Donald Trump and his associates continue to fan countless of these loosely worded theories into the mainstream to distract from these things, from what is really happening in the world as well as the upcoming election. The truth speaks the loudest of how misleading Trump is just by his campaign. Trump's campaign ads paint the clearly obvious desperation from his camp. They are showcasing the world we live in now, what is happening in 2020 under Trump, the one he is president of, and trying to say it is what the world will look like, according to Trump, if Biden becomes president. 
It's desperate. It's pathetic. It's an obvious Hail Mary, but it's also working. This message will likely fall flat on conservative ears, but we hope that it catches the ears of those that are on the fence about voting. Trump has failed us, and we have seen him make atrocious claims with our own eyes and ears, not through interpretation or a third party source. So as the president sends federal troops in unmarked uniforms and vehicles into cities without permission, he quietly pushed his supporters to talk louder about the fraudulent possibilities of mail-in voting, even with no ground to support it. And as we see him lose control, or rather never really had control, of the coronavirus pandemic in this country, he pushes the blame to the opposite side of the political aisle, another country, or even the World Health Organization. And his campaign can market his disastrous job as president as somebody else's. It all sounds absurd, but it's a reality and it's working. And it stems out to the larger problem with the conspiracy theories. It's time to stop putting blame elsewhere. Our first steps are holding ourselves accountable and acting when the situation calls for it. So next time you see a juicy story that has strong claims, especially one fanned from Trump himself, get on the phone that's already in your hand and spend 10 minutes teaching yourself the truth. Look for other sources. Find the facts. Because you might just find that a failed casino owner running this country into the ground is just one piece of a puzzle we all need to be working on fixing. That's our show. For more, head on over to projectnerd.com slash podcast for all our episodes of Diving Deep and the many other podcasts on the Project Nerd Podcast Network. Next time, we'll dive deeper into why it's so important to vote. So please make sure you're registered ahead of November's election. Because the facts presented here should have already pushed you to vote, but if they haven't, we've got more information for you next time.